we're running late. Get moving, get moving. Jenny, <laughs> where are you? Here, Dad. Oh, well, why aren't you watching television like you do every morning? Well, look, how do you expect me to wake up in the morning if I don't hear the Herculoids on TV going bat, bat with their radios <laughs> and shouting, seize him, every five seconds? Barbie wants to play outside. Yeah, well, Barbie doesn't have to wake up in the morning. Come on, you lot, we're running late. What's happening, Dad? We're running half an hour late. What happened to the Herculoids? Barbie wanted to play outside, have some cool place. This is all your fault. Dad, I wanted wheat bix There's no multiple choice this morning. Have some wheat picks. I want a cornflakes. Look, take what you're given and eat. Here. Eat faster, eat faster. Dad, how can you eat faster? Uh, get two spoons and go like a high-speed dredger. <laughs> hey, everyone. Oh, speaking of dredgers, good morning, Nudge. Have a banana. Oh, I'd rather have an apple. I haven't, haven't got time to have an apple. Have a banana instead. What, a banana's faster than that? Yes, they are. They're streamlined. Just slide it down your gullet in one piece. Oh, no, I don't want to trust it. Look, you haven't got time to talk. Eat, eat. Hey, Jen, um, did you see the Herculoids this morning? No. Barbie wanted, wanted to, to play, play outside. outside. Oh. oh, it was a good one this morning. The head of the Drakman came in saying, Seize him! Seize him! I love it when they say that. Seize him! Oh, shut up and seize him, banana. Right, everybody, we're just about on time. You'll be able to catch the bus so long as we don't have any more interruptions. Oh, Dad, can no, I... you haven't got time to talk. Eat, eat. Oh, no, I'll get it. Everybody stay there. Eat. Oh, faster, oh, faster. Mr. Kelly, if there's someone at the door... Yes? Seize him! Oh, shit. <laughs> this is all I need. Another interruption. Yes, what do you want? Well, a polite greeting would be a start, Martin. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I wasn't expecting you. No, well, I didn't tell you I was coming. No, well, you never do. By the look of this place, you weren't expecting anyone. Uh, uh yeah, well... Oh, uh, no, 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 sorry, haven't got time for that. <laughs> no, 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 just all say, hello, Grandma. Hello, hello Grandma. Grandma. Now you say, hello, children. The hello, children. Right, so it's about 30 seconds now. Go and get ready. Oh, uh, and Debbie, can you put Grandma's bags in her room, please? Which room? Uh, your room, darling, of course. Dad! Look, just do it. We haven't got time to argue. Hello, Simon's Grandma. Ah. Oh. <laughs> hello, Sludge. <laughs> Why does she always call me Sludge? Because when she looks at you, it's the first thing that springs into mind. <laughs> right, come on, look. Give me a hand with all this, will you? Oh, I was wondering where that got to. Hey, That's Simon's, isn't it? Yeah, but he never wears it. Oh, cost me an absolute fortune. Why doesn't he ever wear it? Well, because I've always got it. <laughs> hey, that's not a bad one, is it? That's mine. Oh, can I borrow it? <laughs> you can't go to the clothes basket, take my clothes and wear them. Oh, I'll wait till you find it. Oh, give me that. Oh, look, you've got banana all over it. Martin, I am not pleased. Oh, it was only a little bit of banana. <laughs> None of the beds are made. None of the beds are even cold. We've only just got out of them. Well, you'll have to organise yourself to get up earlier. Mum, it wasn't my fault. Whose fault was it? Simon's? Debbie's? The Herculoid. <laughs> You've got Greek neighbours. <laughs> and the Herculoids are on television. And they... And they say, seize him! <laughs> Martin, Sludge isn't one of ours, is he? No. Oh, thank God for that. <laughs> ready, Dad? No, you're not ready. You're not leaving this house until those beds are made. Mum, we haven't got time. It takes 30 seconds to make a bed. Follow me and I'll show you. Dad, we'll miss the bus. You'll have to drive us. Oh, all right, all right. Look, just go and do it. We're wasting time arguing with her. You too, Martin. You have to set a good example. <sighs> Sludge, you know how mothers are supposed to be warm, gentle, loving creatures? Yeah. How did I end up with her? Just lucky, I guess. <laughs> Just a few minutes ago. Oh. It's uh, Peggy, isn't it? <laughs> Where? You. Me? Yes. No, I'm Betty. From Walgett, remember? <laughs> Who could forget Walgett? <laughs> uh, Peggy, can you tell me, is the house always like this? Oh, well, yeah, we were going to paint that wall blue. <laughs> now, I was talking about the mess. Oh, yeah, I noticed that. How'd you get it looking like this when you've only been here a couple of minutes? Peggy, do other people have a problem talking to you, or is it just me? 
Oh, no, no. Everyone's got the same problem. I don't know why. <laughs> I knew Martin would never be able to cope with housework. What he needs is a good woman. Oh, well, I am here most of the time, usually. My point stands. <laughs> but I warn you, I won't always be here. I am spoken for. Spoken for? Mm. Who'd speak for you, apart from a parrot? <laughs> uh, Stan, of course. Stan? Yeah, he's six foot eight. <laughs> oh, <laughs> he's not a parrot, he's an emu. <laughs> Yeah, well, we're engaged. He's my fiasco. Your fiancé? No, he's my fiasco. <laughs> it's a little joke, really. Really? <laughs> oh, hi, Mr Kelly. Did the, the children get away all right, Martin? Yes, uh, morning, Betty. Uh, yeah, they were okay, but I was the one that had the trouble. Ooh, what happened? Uh, Betty, have you ever tried driving with a split skirt? I mean... It was terrible. This, this busload of schoolgirls pulled alongside and they kept whistling my legs every time I changed gear. <laughs> Martin, go and put your trousers on immediately. It's indecent to be dressed like that in, in the middle of the day. Yeah, well, I'm on my way. Betty, can you put on some coffee, please? Yeah, Mr Kelly? Uh, yes? Look, I don't want to be a dobber, but your mother has made a terrible mess in it. <laughs> Good afternoon, Martin Kelly. Architect. <laughs> oh, what did she say? Hmm? Oh, forget it. But, but she, she said, architect. Yes, I know. She's got a brain impediment. She wears an orthopedic hat. <laughs> uh, Mr. Kelly, it's the estate agent on the line. What estate agent? Uh, uh, put him through, please, Betty. All right, I'll put you through to the other side of the room and remember to speak up. <laughs> Hello, Mr. Reed. Peggy. Have you ever sought professional help? Oh, well, we did get a temp in once, but she wasn't very good. Why is my son talking to an estate agent? Well, uh, what estate agent? So, when can I look at the house? Uh, what house? Shut up! Oh, no, I'm sorry, Mr. Reed, not you shut up. No, I, I was talking to my mother. Yes, they are, aren't they? <laughs> Saturday. Fine, good, I'll see you then. Bye-bye. Martin, what estate agent and what house? Mum, I'm thinking of buying another house, all right? But you've got a house. What's wrong with this house? There's nothing wrong with it. It's just getting a little small, that's all. You want a bigger house. You can't cope with the one you've got. Of course I can. Have you seen the living room? It looks like a bunch of refugees from an earthquake have been living in there. I don't wish to discuss this. He doesn't need a new house. No. All he's got to do is... Paint that wall blue. <laughs> what about the children? What about the children? Have you told them how you're disrupting their lives? I'm not disrupting their lives. I'm just thinking of buying another house. Well, they must be told. Don't you tell them. I don't want you interfering in this. When have I ever interfered in your life? <laughs> when I was three, when I was five, when I was nine. You missed out on 11 because I was at boarding school. I never, never approved of that school. Yeah, well, it's the only one I could book myself into. <laughs> and then, then when I was 19, 24, 29 and 31. Well, those times you deserved it. Oh, yeah. Some parents have hyperactive children. I'm stuck with a hyperactive mother. What do you run on? <laughs> Jet fuel? Oh, hello, darling. What did you do today? I broke a tooth. Oh, goodness, let me see. Not mine. Peter Wilson's. <laughs> I, hit him, I hit him with a hockey stick. Why? Because Sam Todd ducked. <laughs> I hope you had a better day, darling. Not too bad. Mm. How are you, Grandma? Good, fine. And here are the cricketers. I bet you had a win today, eh? Oh, how much? <laughs> how much what? Well, how much do you want to bet? We could make some money here, mate. <laughs> Simon, don't tell me you lost. Yeah, we always lose, Grandma. Oh, that's terrible. But who's your best batsman? Well, Simon is. He's terrific. Oh, I might have known. What's your score? 50, 80, a century? Nearly. 17. <laughs> 17? Well, what about the second innings? Well, that was both innings. <laughs> well, well, what about Sludge? How did he do? Oh, double figure, Simon's Grandma. Oh, you scored ten. Two. <laughs> That's terrible. It's the best I've ever done. Well, show me your grip. Well, what would a granny know about cricket? It's a man's game. Who <laughs> oh, is it? Well, we'll see about that. Mum? 
Uh, Jenny, Debbie, Peggy. <clears throat> oh, what's happening? We are playing cricket in the park across the road. Girls versus boys. Oh, but I can't play cricket. Darling, you won't have to. <laughs> <laughs> Mr Kelly will slaughter them. Nudge, <laughs> there's something you ought to know. What's that, Mr Kelly? My mother was a champion swimmer, state netballer and opening bat for the Australian women's cricket team. Oh, Mr Kelly, there's something you ought to know. What's that? I'm playing for the girls. <laughs> Jeez, mate, that's the fastest hundred I've ever seen. Yeah, yeah. How did you ever do it, Simon's grandma? Oh. <laughs> it's all in the technique, boys. Yeah, well, you certainly show us what we're doing wrong, grandma. <laughs> My pleasure. Come on, Jen. We'll get the dinner. Oh, hurry up, Martin. Don't be such a wimp. Oh, oh, honey, I'm really sorry, Mr. Kelly. I got carried away. Look, Betty, it's only a cricket match. You're not supposed to crash tackle in cricket. <laughs> oh, I lost my head, and then I heard someone say, Seize him. I warned you I was playing for the girls, Mr. Kelly. Hey, Dad. I do not, Jenny. That's a lie. You do not, heard you. I do not. You do. Don't. Well, Dad. look, stop quiet. Will you be quiet? Dad, we've got, to, we've got to talk to you. What are you doing, Dad? I'm tightening up the back leg of the chair because somebody keeps leaning back on it and making it loose. Not me. Not me either. Oh, no. <laughs> Everybody who lives here, things get broken by themselves. Must be the goblins who do it. What goblins? Well, they live in the wall and they come out and break things and unmake beds and leave towels all over the floor and forget to take the garbage out. <laughs> <laughs> but it's never anybody who actually lives here, is it? I don't see why we have to sh take the garbage bins out. It's a man's job. Welcome to sexual equality. It's not fair. Not fair? I bet Miss Lawrence wouldn't say men should take out garbage. Miss Lawrence says men are garbage. <laughs> anyway, Dad, I don't mind taking my own garbage out, but why should I have to take out Simon's? He makes more than me anyway. What? Do you think we should all have our own individual little garbage bins with our names on them, like Christmas stockings? <laughs> <laughs> Look, am I imagining things, or did you come in here to talk to me about something? Um, what was it we wanted to say? Something you do. Oh, yeah, I don't. You do! I do not! You do! I don't! Yes, wait, stop! Now, what is it you do do or don't do? Dad, we cannot share a room together. Why not? Because she snores. I do not! <laughs> she does, Dad. She goes... <laughs> oh, my. I do not. Look, Dad, everyone knows girls don't snore. Who knows that? Everyone. It's a fact of life. Girls don't snore. Says so in Dolly. <laughs> What you do, and I'm going to tell everyone on the bus. You dare. Dad, I cannot share a room with this person. I mean, she wakes up at five o'clock in the morning to play with Ken and Barbie under the covers. So? So I don't want to hear little voices in the darkness. So I don't even know. They shouldn't be in the same bed together. They should be in separate shoeboxes. She's only saying that because she snores. Yeah, well, look, I'm sorry, girls. You'll have to put up with it. Anyway, Grandma's not going to be here for long. Yeah, when's she leaving, Dad? Yeah, where's she going this time? She's leaving in three days to go whitewater rafting. Oh, that reminds me, I wanted to discuss something with you. Where's Simon? In the living room. Oh, good. Here, Jenny, try this out. <laughs> Not like that. Sorry, Dad. The goblins made me do it. Yeah. <laughs> OK, everyone, sit down. I've got something I wish to discuss. Uh-oh. What uh-oh? Well, when you say discuss, it always means you want to tell us something. It does not. It does so. All it means is I'm going to put forward an idea and we can debate it. And if we don't agree on it? Tough. I thought so. <laughs> well, come on, Mr Kelly, hit us with the idea. I'll hit you with a brick. <laughs> it's got nothing to do with you. All right, I'll be a, a neutered observer then. Neutered? Yeah, it means I won't take sides. You mean neutral? That's the same thing. You reckon? We'll stay away from the vets. <laughs> now, Mum, what do you think you're doing? Well, this looks like a family meeting to me. Well, it is. Go away. <laughs> family? Look, this is my family having my family meeting. If you want to have a family meeting, go have one of your own. Besides, you only take the kids' side. Yeah, go for it, Granny. I, I won't say a word. Hey, hey, you could be neutered like me. <laughs> is that what his problem is? All right, Mum, look, you can stay, but not one word. All right. Now. Have you told them about the new house? <sighs> <laughs> Quiet! Nudge! Well, I'm sorry, Mr. Kelly, but all this noise is making my brain wobble. <laughs> well, for once I agree with you, Nudge. Now, we can Dad. all discuss this quietly. Dad! Dad. Ah. 
Look, see what happens. You're in the room for 30 seconds and you cause chaos. But I'm not the one making the move. Go to your room. You mean my room? But all I say... Go to your room. <laughs> Very well. Dad! Dad. <laughs> That's better. What is wrong with this house? Yeah, Dad, we're happy here. We can be happy in a nicer house, a bigger house. Where is it? It's at Hunter's Hill. Dad, that's miles away. What about all my friends? What about my dessert? <laughs> Dad, we don't want to move. Look, will you, will you just give it a chance? I'm not saying that I'm going to buy this actual particular house, but I think we should start thinking about the idea. I mean, you girls must agree you could do with more room when Grandma stays. Yeah, but she doesn't come that often, Dad. Yeah, well, I mean, that's now, but that might change in the future. How do you mean? Well, let's face it, she's pretty healthy now, but she's not getting any younger, and there might come a time where we'll have to look after her. Yeah, I suppose so. OK, well, look, we'll just start thinking about the idea, eh? We'll all have a look at this place on Saturday and see what you think. OK, and if we don't like it, tough. <laughs> Hi, Grandma. What are you doing? Oh, I'm just checking my equipment. This is what I'll wear when I go white water rafting. Try it on. Let me see. Oh. <laughs> How do I look? Like a Herculoid. <laughs> <laughs> is rafting dangerous? Oh, no. Not very, darling. Don't you worry. Is that what's going to make you sick? I beg your pardon? Dad said that's why we need a bigger house, because you'll have to come and stay with us. Oh. He did, did he? Yeah. <laughs> Well, you never know, he might just be right. None of us is getting any young yet. Look, Mum, I think I should call the doctor. Oh, no, no, dear, no. I'm sure it's nothing serious. I'll be up in a minute to do the housework. No, 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 it's all done. You stay here and rest. Are the beds made? Yes, they are. And the washing up's done. Oh. I don't want to be a trouble to you, dear. You're my mother. You're always trouble. <laughs> I didn't quite mean that the way it sounded. Now, look, can I get you anything? No, no, no. I have my bell. I can ring it if I need you. Yes, I know. You've done it 15 times already. <laughs> you won't bother you, then. No, no, no. I want you to be a bother. Okay, now? Yes. <sighs> Oh, dear, I'm sorry. Oh, my hand must have slipped. <laughs> All right, then. Well, I'll be in the office if you need me. Thank you. Oh, oh damn it! I'm coming, I'm coming! <laughs> oh, no! I'm coming, I'm coming! Betty, Betty, leave that. I'll do it later. Oh, but, but, Mr. No, we Kelly. haven't got time. I want oh, those but, plans copied. Oh, but, Mr. Kelly, you know we have a fitting oh, season. Yes, Mr. I know, I know. Look, just you, you get to work, and I'll start working. Oh, God, there she goes again. Oh, the bells, the bells. <laughs> I was never sick. You what? I'm as fit as a mallee ball. Cow. That's not a very nice way to speak to your mother. Ma, you mean you had me running around all day like a blue... Ma! Tail fly just for a joke? Sit down, Martin. You made me very angry today. Oh, I made you angry? I'm not going to let you use me as an excuse to buy a new house. I didn't tell the kids that. I, 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 you I... told them that you'd have to look after me when I was old and frail. Well, I did a bit. Well, Martin, I don't intend growing old and frail. There's every chance that I might outlive you. <laughs> well, there is after the day. And if I really need any help, well, I don't intend that you should have to do it. But, Ma... Martin, you're a single parent. You have a lot on your plate. You have your, your job and the children. You don't have to be responsible for me. Uh, no, I, I don't intend being a burden. If I do need help, well, I'll make my own arrangements. Now, I'm very good at that. That makes sense, doesn't it? Yes, yes, I suppose so. But 
Why do we always have to go through so much confusion to make sense? That's what mothers are for. <laughs> See it one more time. Grandma, you better! Oh, much better, darling. Hello, Deb. Good to see you up and about, Grandma. Thank you. Oh, and here are the boys. And how did the match go today? Oh, triple figures, Mrs. Simons, Kelly's grandmother. <laughs> you got three. 101. Oh, you scored 101, Sludge. Oh, oh. That's wonderful. Oh, it was a team effort. Oh, it was. Yeah, Simon got the 100, I got the one. <laughs> Where's Dad, Grandma? Well, he's had a very hard day, so he's, he's having a little lie down. <laughs> there he goes again. Men are such babies. <laughs> Was that, Betty? I said I'll be off. It's oh, it's almost five thirty. Five thirty? Oh, gee, I had no idea it was so late. Well, I'll just do my check off. Check off? You're doing some sort of Russian play? <laughs> no, I'm just going to check that everything's turned off. Oh. Terry typewriters turned off, and Clyde copies are turned off. And what about Betty Brain? <laughs> Silly, I can't turn my brain off. That's because it's never been turned on. <laughs> Betty, why do you have to give everything a name? Well, it makes me feel more at home, you know, like down on the farm with all my animals around me. Oh, right. Well, <clears throat> I'll leave you to it. Oh, what's the rush all of a sudden? Mm -hmm. Oh, Anne said she might call around for a drink. What again? What again? Her again. She was here last week. So? So? <gasps> do I hear the tinkle of romance in the air? No, you hear the tinkle of your brain rattling inside your skull. <laughs> Just remember, Mr. Kelly, girls like their men to have a bit of mystery about them. Play hard to get, like you did with me. <laughs> what on earth are you talking about? Oh, well, you remember how you used to yell and shout at me and pretend you didn't like me? When all the time I knew you did. <laughs> you men are so transparent. Well, I can't stand around here talking about this all night. I'll see you in the morning. OK. Oh, come on, come on. This place looks like a bomb's hit it. What's that you're watching? It's Dirty Harry, Dad. Yeah? Well, I'll just make my day. See you later, Clint. <laughs> Dad, what's that? Yeah, it's the best bit where he blows his magnum up this guy's nostril. <laughs> well, bad luck. Anne's coming around for a drink. What, again? What again, again? Hey, she was here last week. Yeah, I reckon she fancies you. Told you so. Oh, shut up, a lot of you. And just remember, Mr. Kelly, a wink's as good as a nod to a blind gander. <laughs> One of these days, I'll start to understand that woman, and when that day comes... Yeah? 
Oh, no, I'm losing my mind. <laughs> She's right, you know. I still reckon Anne fancies you. Come on, what's going on? Nudge, just because Anne chooses to come round for a quiet drink doesn't mean anything's going on. Why not? I mean, you must be a bit slow. If that was Simon, he'd be trying it's to... Nudge! <laughs> Look, Anne and I are just good friends, that's all. We have a lot in common. Yeah, like what? Well, like you're an architect and she's a detective sergeant. Yeah, like two peas in a pod. You draw houses and she shoots people. It's a match made in heaven. Nudge. Yeah? Go home. Oh, fair enough. Simon? Yeah? Go with him. Oh. We've got to stay and watch you two have lots in common. Go home! Fair enough. No, not you go home. I mean, Nudge, go home. Oh, at least it's a change. What is? Well, usually when I arrive, you greet me with the word shut up. <laughs> Come in, sit down, have a drink. Oh, I love it when you're masterful. Hello, boys. Hi, Ian. Ten four, Sergeant. Yes, good, Nudge. <laughs> right, now, gin and tonic? Scotch and soda. Scotch and soda? That's right. But I thought you drank gin and tonic. What made you think that? Well, that's what you drank last week. That's all you had last week. But um, I bought some more tonic. Well, congratulations. Now you won't catch malaria. <laughs> well, what would you like to drink other than scotch and soda? A uh, brandy and dry. Oh, I haven't got that. Well, why did you ask me what I wanted? Well, I was hoping you'd say gin and tonic. I would like a gin and tonic. Would you? No, but I'll die of thirst if I don't say something you've got. There you go. Oh, but you didn't say you had a beer. Oh, would you rather have a beer? Yes, please. Oh, what are they on about? It's an obscure mating ritual. Any minute now, his feathers will puff up and you'll start wobbling. <laughs> Nudge, would you like to have a beer? Oh, yeah. Then go home and get one. Ta-da! What ta-da? Ta-da, I've got some great news, ta-da. Ask me how close I can park to a pillar box. Oh, how close can you park to a pillar box? I don't know, but it doesn't matter anymore because today I got my permit. Your learner's permit? Oh, that's terrific. Yeah, so now you can all take me driving. <laughs> Was it something I said? Ta-da! <laughs> Ta-da again! What ta-da again? Dad, I'm ready. So you are. Congratulations. Well, come on. Come on what? I'm ready for my first driving lesson. Uh, yes, well, you see, the question is, am I ready for your first driving lesson? <laughs> What's the answer? No. Oh, Dad, well, when will you be ready? Ooh, try 1995. Dad, <laughs> you promised me you'd take me driving. When? Early this morning, when you were half asleep, before you could say no. Oh, don't remember that. Got it on tape. <laughs> Well, we're going to need your L plates. Yeah, I've got them. Oh, well, we'll also need your... Permit, got that too. Oh, well, we're going to need my... Licence, I've got them. Come on. Oh, oh well, gee, Deb, here's a bit of bad luck. I can't seem to find Car my... Car keys, I've got them. Come on. <laughs> Deb, wouldn't it be terrible if we went out there and found that someone had taken all the wheels off the car? Uh -huh. I just checked. All the wheels are there. Come on. <laughs> Why can you never find a car thief when you need one? <laughs> Thanks, Betty. Anyone call? Uh, yes. Oh, who was it? I don't know. Oh, Betty, how many times have I told you you must always get the names of the people who call? They wouldn't tell me. Why not? Well, because it was the wrong number. <laughs> oh, I said you'd be cranky, but they just hung up on me. Honestly, city people have got no manners. If you got a wrong number in the country, you'd talk for hours. You would? Yeah, well, you probably know them anyway. <laughs> well, apart from complete strangers ringing the wrong number, did anyone call? Uh, where have you been, anyway? Mm, no, I just thought I'd stock up on some more grog in case Anne calls by. Oh, we're having a lot of in case Anne calls by, aren't we? No, we just enjoy having a quiet drink after work. I mean, it's pleasant, isn't it? I wouldn't know. What do you mean? Well, nobody ever asks me. Oh, God, Betty, you're more than welcome to stay and have a quiet drink with us. <laughs> oh, no. uh, you sure Anne won't mind? Oh, why would Anne mind? Well, you know, I, I don't want to get in the way of any... You know. You know what? <laughs> oh, Betty, look, there's not going to be any you knowing going on. We just like having a quiet drink in the evenings, that's all. What's in the box, Mr. Cully? Oh, gin, scotch, vodka, bourbon, Bacardi. Well, you certainly will be quiet with all that to drink. <laughs> just as well I'll be around to help you drink it all. Oh, we're not going to drink it all at once. <laughs> I just wanted to make sure that I had whatever Anne asked for. Oh! Jumpy, though. Excited because Anne's coming. No, 
My nerves are still in orbit after taking Debbie driving. Oh, you gave her a lesson, did you? I did. How was it? Have you ever seen films of Hitler's tanks rolling across Poland? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it was like that. I mean, people ran into the street and moved their cars onto the nature strip. <laughs> An old man waved a white handkerchief. Oh, well, that's what it proves, Mr Kelly. Yeah, she has trouble with left and right. What, her left hand doesn't know what her right hand's doing? No, her left hand doesn't know her right hand exists. <laughs> well, yeah, she's probably just nervous. Driving like that, she has every right to be. Now, just calm yourself and I will answer it. Fine. And, and don't say architect. I won't. Good afternoon, Martin Kelly, architect. Oh. Are you sure you don't want me to do a horse's thingy? I beg your pardon? Well, you, you know, you eat them. But well, we didn't walk it anyway. I knew things were tough in the country. Oh. Well, you know, the little bits of cheese and olives on a stick. I'm very good at them. You mean hors d'oeuvres. Yeah, well, that's what I said. Anyway, will I cook some? Betty, this is just a casual drink. It's not a cocktail party. Ah, oh, just casual, is it? Yes. Then why are we using the best glass? <laughs> well, it's not the same having a gin and tonic out of a glass with half a peanut butter label on it. <laughs> and the little bear staring at you. If you say so. What are you doing? Acting casual. <laughs> and good to see you. Something wrong? I'm just waiting for you to tell me to go home or shut up. Oh. Oh, you know Betty? Ah, yes, yeah, so I do. Uh, welcome to our lovely home. <laughs> I beg your pardon? I, I'm practicing to be a hostess. I guessed. Yeah, that's right. You guessed me hostess. <laughs> Is she playing with a full set of clubs? <laughs> uh, Mr Kelly, are you sure you don't want me to... Whip up a horse's thingy. You can climb up a bull's behind for all I get. <laughs> oh. Now, what would you like to drink? Oh, is this a trick question? A pardon? Well, I'll ask you for something and you won't have it, will you? Uh, no, I stocked up. You can have whatever you like. You can have gin and tonic, scotch and soda, vodka and tonic, brandy and dry, brandy and tonic, uh, red wine, white wine, uh, vodka and tomato juice, brandy and tomato juice, scotch and gin. Now, what'll it be? A beer. A beer? A beer. But that's what you had last time. So? So, well, you always change. You never have the same thing. Uh, Mr Kelly got all those specially. What, you're planning on drinking that all tonight? <laughs> no, of course not. I just thought I'll just have the beer and drink the rest tomorrow. <laughs> all, right, all right. Now, Betty, what would you like? Just, just a, a shandy, shandy thanks. thanks. No way. Uh, Simon, it's not fair. You promised me you'd take me driving. Forget it, Deb. Once is enough. I served my time yesterday. Well, how am I supposed to get better if I don't practice? <laughs> That's what Simon said to Trixie, but it didn't work for him either. <laughs> Excuse me, uh, have you noticed we have a guest? Hello, Anne. Hi, kids. Ten four, Sergeant. Over and out, Nudge. <laughs> anyway, I still say it's not fair, and you promise me. I don't care what I said. That was before I saw how bad you are. Anne, it's not fair, is it? I mean, how am I supposed to get my license if they wanted me practice? Well, I... Anne, would you get into a car with someone who doesn't know their left from their right? I should, it's sexist just because I'm a girl, Anne. It's because she's a rotten driver, Anne. Help! Look, cut it out, cut it out. Now, what's the problem? Simon won't take me driving, Dad. Dad, she's got no mechanical aptitude at all. Well, how am I supposed to learn if nobody will teach me? Oh, I'll teach you, Dad. Will you? Yes. yes, Betty will teach you. She's mechanical. Yeah, she's got a key in her back. <laughs> Yeah, us girls have got to stick together. Yeah, and we boys have to watch them kangarooing down the drive. Shut up, Nudge. <laughs> Is it always like that around here? Oh, most days. Oh, I thought I had it tough. Today I had a squad room full of armed hold-up men, bag snatchers and bikies. It was paradise compared with this. <laughs> well, you get used to it. How long does it take? Listen, did you really have that many crims in the squad room? Oh, it's a problem with police stations. Criminals keep turning up there. <laughs> it keeps them off the street, I suppose. Yeah, but... Uh... But what? Well, I was going to say it's no place for a nice girl like you, but... But I'm not a nice girl? <laughs> of course you are. It's just... Well, I worry about you. What's to worry? Well, it's not very safe, is it? Uh, couldn't you transfer to a safer job? Like telling school children how to cross the road. No. Uh, what about the legal division? Uh, you're intelligent? What, you're, you're telling me that being a cop is no job for someone who's intelligent? No, of course I'm not. I'm just... Being a snob. A snob? No, I'm not. 
Are you saying that my job lacks dignity, that I could do better? Well, you could do better. But listen, it is my career. It is what I want to do. Believe me, it has been hard work getting where I am, so don't just sit there and tell me that I could do better. Well, I didn't mean it to sound like that. Well, how did you mean it to sound? I don't know, really. I like what I do. I do it well, all right? All right. But it's dangerous. You're not kidding me. <laughs> oh. Oh. What was that? That was straight scotch. <coughs> Good. Benny, are you all right? Do you want me to drive you home? In your car? Of course. Mr. Kelly, I never want to get in that car again as long as I live. Um, yeah. mm. Oh, Anne, you're here. Well, we are going out tonight, aren't we? Yes, it's just, well, oh, you're a bit early, that's all. Oh, well, I'll go and come back. No! <laughs> come on in, come on in. Now, something to drink? Of what? Anything you like. Oh, I don't think I could go through all that again. Let's skip the drink. <laughs> oh, sit down. How was your day? Well, shouldn't you bring me my pipe and slippers first? Eh? Well, I mean, it's a bit like coming home to the little woman, isn't it, really? There you are in your cute little pinny asking me how my day was. <laughs> I feel positively domestic. Oh, yes. Well, um, <laughs> I was just, uh, just getting dinner for the kids. You're amazing, you know. Three kids and you've still got a figure like a girl. <laughs> Well, I reckon it's important not to let yourself go. <laughs> so anyway, how was your day? Oh, you do not want to know. Yes, I do. I'm, I'm interested in what you do. I want you to tell me things. All right, I shot at a bank robber. Oh, I don't want you to tell me things like that. I want you to tell me nice things. All right, I missed. Oh. <laughs> what was he doing, anyway? When last I saw him, he was ducking. <laughs> how was your day? Oh, well, you know what it's like for an architect. Another day, another toilet block. Oh, is that the client we're having dinner with tonight? No, 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 that's the council. The client we're having dinner with tonight is Big Bickies. It's a complete shopping mall and office block tower. Oh, terrific. So you've got the job. Oh, uh, well, not quite, but I'm almost there. That's why we're having dinner with him tonight. I want you to knock him out with your beauty. I'll do my best. Listen, do you mind if we don't mention your job? What do you mean? Well, you know, all that talk about shooting and bank robbers and that, it tends to stop a dinner conversation dead. It has the same effect on the bank robber. <laughs> you know what I mean. Anyway, Harrison is Harrison? A... Harrison, yeah, he's the client. He's a... Uh... Male chauvinist? Yeah, that's right, and he's also a, a bit snob. of a... snob? Yeah, that's right, and I wouldn't want you to... Make you feel ashamed of me? No, no, that's not hey, it at Dad, all. Hey, Dad, spaghetti's boiling over. Oh, thank God for that. <laughs> and can you check my thumbs? Oh, hang on, um... Could, Anne, could you? It's just, I've, I've got... Mm. And I'm not just your fashion accessory, you know. What's a fashion accessory? Something you carry around to look good. Miss Lawrence is fashion accessory. Miss Lawrence? Who's she? She's my teacher. Oh, Miss Lawrence and I sound like we've got a lot in common. No, you don't. Why not? You don't have a moustache. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's look at these sums. <sighs> Are they add-ups? They're takeaways. Oh, does that mean we get to eat them? No. That was a little joke. Was it? Forget it. Now, let's look at the sums. Oh, no, Jenny, you've got them all wrong. Have I? Yes, 8 from 13. You've made it 15. Is that wrong? Well, of course it is. You can't take 8 from 13 and get 15. You haven't paid back. What's paid back? Well, you borrow 1 from here and you pay it back over here, don't you? No, we don't. Why not? <laughs> Miss Lawrence says we can take what we want and we don't have to pay back. Well, of course you do. Don't you know what happens when you take away and you don't pay back? What? A policeman will shoot at you. Are you sure Miss Lawrence isn't one of the Beagle boys? Maybe. Well, I'll show you the legal way how to do sums. Uh, here you go, Dad. Hmm? Oh, where have you been? Oh, we just took Debbie for a drive. You mean you actually let her drive? Oh, no way, Mr Kelly. We're not mad. Haven't you seen Betty? She's still shaking and she keeps yelling out, The semi-trailer! The semi-trailer! <laughs> Dad, it's not fair. They wouldn't let me practice. I want to live. Oh, they drove up and down through the shopping centre chatting up girls. Oh, Simon, you mean you actually chatted up girls with your sister in the back seat? Oh, it was all right, Mr Kelly. We just threw an old footy jumper over her head. <laughs> Simon, you're really a pain sometimes, you know that? <laughs> Debbie, we're too young to die. Oh, very funny. Oh, not you know I've still got things to do, places to go. Hamburgers to eat. <laughs> you definitely can't be starting your driving. Well, how do you expect me to get out, kids? Oh, hi, Anne. You look lovely. Thanks, Dad. Hello, Anne. Then four, Sergeant. Oh, of course not. <laughs> if you can't be quiet, you're absolutely terrifying. Quiet! 
Just settle down. This isn't a family, it's the D-Day invasion. <laughs> what are you on me? Just put on the girl. It's not because you're a girl, it's because you have absolutely no empathy with mechanical things. Like cars. I don't need mechanical empathy, I'm an artist. All right then, go and draw a car. <laughs> Come on, Anne, let's get out of here. Good night, kids. Yes, and, uh, kids, don't fight too late. Yes, see you later, Dad. Thanks, Have a good sir. time. Oh, Nudge. Yes, Sarge? Ten four. Oh, I thought I was going to say that. Please, Simon, if I don't practice, I won't get better. <laughs> if you do practice, we won't get better. What do you mean? There is no cure for death. <laughs> Go on, just a few minutes a day. Look, what you need, Deb, is a stimulator. <laughs> Like the pilots have, so they can practice crashing without a plane. He's right, you know. Am I? Yeah. Well, that makes a nice change. Yeah, if you could find a way of coordinating your accelerator and clutch and practice that, you'd be all right. Well, how am I supposed to do that? I've got an idea. Uh, sit down where I was. Yep. Yeah. Uh, lay down here on the floor, mate, with your head up this end. Oh. And, uh, or put your feet in the air. What, you want me to play dead? <laughs> no, you're the car. You see, that's the clutch and that's the accelerator. You got that? I think so. Well, you stamp on that for the clutch and that for the accelerator. Right, what do I stamp on for the brake? Never you know. <laughs> uh, just get a feel for the pedals. Honey, this is great, Deb. Yeah, and what do I use for um, steering and gear changing? Uh, Jan, bring in a plate and a wooden spoon, would you? What are you playing? We're giving Debbie a driving lesson. I'm the, I'm, the, I'm the car. Can I, be a, well, can I be a horse? No. Well, you can be a passenger. Yeah, make sure you put your seatbelt on. Right. Here we go. <laughs> oh, my God, the ferret! <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I cut it out, will you? This is serious. Are you kidding? Take a look at yourself. <laughs> All right, Jenny, cut it out. OK. OK. Clutch in. Into gear. Accelerate. Clutch out smoothly. <laughs> it's more real, this one. OK. Change up. Indicate left. Have a good indicator. Use your arm. <laughs> 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 Shut up. Right, now you're coming to a stop sign. I said you're coming to a stop sign. You probably say you're not allowed to drive that sofa in. Oh, hi, kids. Oh, Dad, I'm really sorry, but I broke a vase. But it wasn't her fault. Oh, well, that's all right, dear. It is? Aren't you home a little early from dinner? I'm afraid we didn't make it to dinner. What happened? Did something go wrong? Mr Harrison went wrong. What, the male chauvinist? That's right. He started talking about a policewoman's role in society. I'm afraid your father has lost that account. And you didn't tell him off, did you? I didn't say a thing. Sir Lancelot here climbed over the table and tried to thump him. Dad! You didn't. What happened? Well, what do you think happened? She arrested me.
There, got it. What's that? Uh, Betty's intercom. I've been wanting to do this for weeks. I've disconnected it. Now she can't announce anyone. Oh, Dad, that's cruel. You know how much she enjoys doing that. It's like debarking a dog. <laughs> Debbie, Betty's all right. In fact, she's got a heart of solid gold. Yeah, and a head of solid wood. <laughs> When'd she do back, anyway? Oh, later this morning. I said she could stay on in Walgett for the Bachelor and Spinster's Ball. Huh, what's she going as? <laughs> oh, Deb, give her a break. Actually, I'm glad she's coming back. Mr. Slivovonovich is driving me crazy. Mr. Slivovona who? Not who, Vich. He's a crazy Hungarian builder doing Mrs. Farrell's renovations. What, he's a lousy builder? No, no, he's a great builder. It's just that he won't stick to my designs. And I've done these lovely designs for Mrs. Farrell's second floor renovations. And? And he wants to do them as a basement. <laughs> he says it'd be better if we excavate underneath the house and build them down there. Why? Because his brother has an excavation firm. <laughs> Surely she'll miss out on the view that way. Oh, no, his other brother will paint one on the rock face for her. He does all the murals for the fish and chip shops. Well, at least the view will never be built out that way. True. Listen, have you got the specifications there? Um, I think Betty must have filed them. Oh, dear, I hope not. Betty's files are like a black hole. Things disappear into them and go into another dimension. Really? Truly. Probably, right now, someone in a galaxy far, far away is building Mrs. Farrell's second floor extensions on a Death Star. <laughs> oh, well, with any luck, she's probably put them in her pending file. Under P? No, under W. W? What, for waiting to be filed? No, W for one day I must do something about this one. <laughs> yep, you're right, they're here. Mm. Hosanna. Now, how is that letter you were typing for me? Got it right here. Perfect in every way. Oh, good. Uh, except that you seem to have killed off my client. What do you mean? You address her as dead Mrs. Farrell. <laughs> yeah, um, must have been a mistake. Yes, well, Mrs. Farrell will be thrilled to hear that. You better correct it. How do I do that? Uh, well, this used to be a self-correcting typewriter, but it couldn't keep up with Betty and had a nervous breakdown. <laughs> better use this. Ah, uh, correcting fluid. Yeah, she orders it in 44-gallon drums. <laughs> this is good. I'm just like a real secretary. So you are. Anyway, thanks for giving me a hand this morning. Oh, and you better fix the end there where you say, Yours sinfully, Martin Kelly. <laughs> Hello, Martin Kelly Architect. Yes, Mr. Slivovonovich, I'll put you through. Hello. Hello. He's gone. Is he? Oh, I must have cut him off. Oh, well, don't worry. He's out there floating around in the ether somewhere. You've probably connected him to the Death Star. <laughs> Have you been taking Betty lessons? Sorry about the time, Mr. Kelly. Oh, but, Betty, I wasn't expecting you until later. I know, but the train ran early. Honestly. <laughs> just can't depend on them, can you? What are you doing, Debbie? I'm just filling in for you, Betty. Oh, well, I hope you haven't mucked up my files or anything. I hardly touched them. Well, because you know how it is, Mr. Kelly. If you're not sure of the job, you can go and muck everything up. True, true. Oh, look, everything's working perfectly. Your files are here, your typewriter's here, your phone's working. Mm, let me see now. Oh, yeah. Uh-huh. There, I told you. My bus has gone blunt. <laughs> now, who could that possibly have been who did that? Betty, I cannot tell a lie. Debbie did it. Oh, well, I'm not sure. I haven't made up my mind yet. Yeah, we'll think about it. Who is that? Trish. Two tickets. Got it. That'll be for me. <coughs> no way, it's mine. It's mine. Hello? It's for you. <laughs> Hello? Oh, Sandy, hi. Sandy. No, no, I was just telling Trish I haven't made up my mind yet. No, no, it's still open. Okay. Yeah, we'll think about it. Two tickets and a voucher to the Pizza Hut. Oh, take it, take it. Never wait, I can do better than that. Simon, we're talking about food here. You can't do much better than that. <laughs> I've still got a few more offers to come. Uh, add them up and I'll take a look at them later. What's going on here? Oh, it's the formal. Simon's taking offers. Offers? What are you talking about? Oh, what's all this? Alicia will supply our corsage, Barbara will buy her own ticket, Trish will buy both tickets, Sandy will buy both tickets. And dinner at the pizza. She's got to be the front runner so far. <laughs> <laughs> That's the only record I've got. Oh, Nudge, what's going on? Oh, it's the girls who want Simon to ask them to the formal. They're bidding. That's deplorable. It's not all that bad. Tickets are 20 bucks each. It's <laughs> like a push, aren't you? I suppose you're in this too, are you? No, who'd bid for me? <laughs> 
Uh, no, I suppose I get one of Simon's leftovers. Oh, come on, Nudge. There are lots of fish in the sea. Yeah, but how come I always get the ones John West rejects? <laughs> Anyway, besides, yeah. Besides what? Oh, nothing. Nudge, don't tell me you found a girl of your own. Oh, well, sort of. You've met a sort of girl? No, I sort of met her. Oh, well, what's her name? Tracy. What's she look like? Is she pretty? Well, don't tell anyone. That's her? Nudge, she's gorgeous. Yeah, I know. Oh, and you've actually met her? Well, I've spoken to her. What'd you say? I said, is that your dog? <laughs> Yeah, I knew it was a stupid thing to say. Why? Well, because it was a cat. <laughs> but, you know, I get all confused when I see her. My mouth goes all dry, my palms get all sweaty, and my... Uh, what? Well, my ears itch. My ears itch? Yeah, there they go again, just, just talking about her. Well, where did you meet her? Well, down the road. She's just moved in. Wow. Yeah. Cover girl on Dolly. Yeah. You gonna ask her the formal? Are you kidding? She wouldn't go out with me. Oh, she might if you ask her. Get in early. It's your best chance. What, before someone else does? No, before she finds out what you really like. <laughs> See what I mean? I'm sorry, I didn't mean it like that. Oh, yes, you did. I'll never have a chance with a good-looking girl. Oh, of course you will. Look, there are lots of things about you that a girl would find attractive. Yeah, like what? Well, there's, um... Oh, there's... I'll get back to you. <laughs> yep. Oh, did you remember to return Mr. Slivovitz's call? No, 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 Betty, it's not Slivovitz, it's Slivovonovich. What? Not what? Vich. Which? Not which, Vich! Which Vich are we talking about, Mr. <laughs> no, 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 it's Slivovonovich. There's a Sliv and a Von and a Vich. Oh, you mean there's three of them? No, 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 no Betty, it's Slivovonovich. It's not Slivovitz. Oh, is it? Yeah, yeah, Slivovitz is a fiery Hungarian spirit that drives you crazy. On second thoughts, that's not a bad name for it. <laughs> oh, too late. Uh Hello. Oh, Mr. Slivovitz. Yes, we were just talking about you. No, you don't want to know. No, you can't do that. No, you can't. Because I'm the architect and I say so. Look, don't do anything. I'm coming over to see you, Mr. Slivovitz. What? Uh, yes, I know. There's a Sliv and a Von and a Vich. Yeah, well, I'll come over and see all three of them. <laughs> You're welcome. Is that Mr. Slivovitz? Yeah, now he wants to put the roof tiles on upside down. Why? Because he says, that way the colour won't fade. <laughs> oh, that's silly. Yes. Everyone knows they're the same colour on both sides. <laughs> Betty, is there any Hungarian blood in your family? Mm, no. Only top eye. Just you. <laughs> oh, Mr Kelly, before you go, could you spare me a couple of minutes? Oh, Betty, I'm in a oh, terrible please, rush. Please, please. I need, I really need your advice. And as Dad always says, a problem shared is source of the gander. <laughs> All right. What's the problem? Well, it's Stan. What about him? Well... Oh, Betty, it's not going to be one of those long, involved, meaningless stories, is it? No. All right. Well, get on with it. Well... We've done that bit. Have you got time to interrupt me, Miss Sorry. Well... See, you know when I, I went down to Walgut to help Stan... Do the balls. Oh, yeah. yeah. Don't remind me. Yeah, and, and then I stayed for the bachelor in Spencer's ball. And you know what they're like. Well, Betty, the only thing I know about them is that someone always ends up on their back under the keg with their mouth open. Yeah, it's terrible, isn't it? And my dress got all muddy. <laughs> anyway, I think that Harriet Urquhart Jones has set her cap for my stand. What? You mean she's after him? Yes. Well, what does she do? Flirt with him? Dance with him all night? Make him an offer he couldn't refuse? Worse. Hmm, what did she do? She ignored him. <laughs> what are you talking about? All night. She ignored him, except when she asked him to get her a saveloy on a stick. <laughs> well, I don't see the problem. Oh, Mr Kelly, you are so naive in the ways of scheming hussies I'll carry it. Can't you see? She's, she's, she's playing hard to get. Sounds like she's playing bloody impossible to get. <laughs> well, what did Stan do? Oh, he ignored her. Oh, so he's playing hard to get too, is he? No, well, he always ignores everyone at balls. He only goes for the sad voice. <laughs> What's he doing? Oh, he's taking final offers. Good. We don't need him anyway. Come with me. Look, I've never said this to anyone before. Right, now she's on her way over. Who is? Tracy, Miss Dolly Covergirl. I've asked her over for coffee. 
Oh, I'm getting out of here. Sit down. <laughs> now, look, Nudge, this is your chance to really meet her. Yeah? Yeah, then you can ask her out. Um, well, what should I do? For a start, you can stop scratching your ear. <laughs> what do I say? Would you do me the honour of being my partner at the formal? No. What do you mean, no? Well, I want to go with Tracy. <laughs> When she gets here. Um, well, you don't think I should mention the dog? No, forget the dog. A dog's probably dead. Oh. Look, just be casual. Just say anything. Just, just be cool. Now, that'll be her. Now, just remember, be natural. But what do I say? Be cool. Just say anything. Get the conversation going. Tracy, come in. Good to see you. Thanks. That's nice of you to ask me over. <sighs> oh, look who's here. Who? You. <laughs> look, Tracy, this is a friend of mine, Nudge. Oh, hello, Nudge. Uh, oh, they tell me your dog's dead. Um, no, I, I haven't got a dog. Oh, it's just as well. I mean, you want me to keep him, he'd be a bit on the bugle by now. Sit down. Well, this is nice. You're the first people I've met in the neighbourhood. You're kidding. Surely the phone's running hot all the time. Oh, afraid not. I find it really hard to meet people. Oh, go on. I bet the guys are queuing up to ask you out. No, not really. I never seem to meet any guys. I mean, I hate to admit this, but you're absolutely stunning. Oh, thanks. No, I mean, the, the hair, the clothes, the makeup. Oh, it doesn't seem to do any good. Maybe guys are frightened of me. Maybe they're frightened of your dog. <laughs> Forget the dog. Ask her. Ask her. Would you like a drink? Oh, yeah, that'd be nice. <laughs> Trace, it's my brother Simon. He'll get you a drink. Nudge, ask her the minute she walks back in here. What? You don't think I should lead up to it? I mean, the dog thing seems to be working well. No, just ask her before you lose your nerve. Thanks, Simon. Uh, um, Tracy, before I lose my nerve, would you do me the, uh... Honour. Honour of being my partner at the formal? Oh, Nudge, I'd love to. You would? But Simon just asked me to go with him. <laughs> Mail's here, Mr Kelly. Hmm? Oh. Uh, and Helga said to say, Hello, Mr Kelly. <laughs> That's, um, Swedish for hello, Mr. Kelly. <laughs> I don't know why people say Swedish is such a difficult language. <laughs> oh, well, thank you, Betty. And that's English for thank you, Betty. Is it? It certainly is. Oh, there's one here for you. Oh, oh. Oh, it's from Stan. Well, I'm not reading that one. Why not? Well, because I'm not speaking to him. After what he did with that Urk Jones. <laughs> he didn't do anything with her. Exactly. He was so careful about ignoring her that I knew he was up to something. Us women can sense these things. Oh, Betty, for God's sake, read the letter. He's probably writing to apologise. Apologise? What for? What have you heard? Nothing. He hasn't done anything. Maybe that's why he's writing to apologise. Why would anyone do that? Because Stan knows you, and anyone who knows you knows you've got a brain like a butter churn. <laughs> Betty, for God's sake, look, look at it from my point of view. I mean, you're getting yourself into a state of terminal jealousy because Stan hasn't done anything. Uh, Harriet Umbrella Jones... Urkut. Watch your language. Hasn't done anything. <laughs> Nobody has done anything and you're upset now. Please, 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 why are you worrying? Because as long as they do nothing, I can't do anything. Oh, I'll pretend I didn't hear that. <laughs> kind of strategy and as long as they do nothing I can't do anything I can only do something when they stop doing nothing. <laughs> what do you want them to do? Oh, nothing he's my man oh Betty look I'm gonna talk to Mr. Slivovitz now I mean I can understand him he talks about sensible things like putting roof tiles on upside down <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> hello Betty are you on your own well, I'm reading Stan's letter, but he can't hear me. Oh. <laughs> well, um, I wanted to get a woman's opinion on something. Did you? Yeah. Which one? Which opinion? Which woman? Well, you, you're a woman, aren't you? <laughs> yes, Nudge, I'm a woman with a heart that aches. Yeah, yeah, I'm a guy with ears that itch. <laughs> Nudge, I'll put aside my sorrow and listen to your problem. Yeah, well, I, I just reckon she's playing hard to get. Yeah, that's exactly what I think. What do you think the best thing to do would be? Well, I reckon she should be wrapped up in barbed wire and put through the sheep dip. <laughs> yeah, that's different. I was going to send her a bucket of chips. <laughs>
There you go, Dad. I told you you'd like it. Yeah, I must admit, Simon, that was a funny movie. And you said, they don't make them like they used to. Yeah, well, I used to make them in black and white. What did you think of it, Nudge? I thought it was all right, I suppose. Oh, well, don't explode with enthusiasm. I thought you liked flying high. Well, I've seen it before. You didn't mind the other 11 times. <laughs> yeah, what's the matter, Nudge? I mean, you hardly smiled at all through the whole movie. I don't feel like laughing. I think I'll go for a walk. Yeah, hang on, mate. I'll come with you. I'll shout you a pizza. That'll achieve you. Oh, no, thanks, mate. I'd rather be on my own. Was that Nudge or somebody wearing a Nudge mask? <laughs> Did he just refuse food? Yeah, that's what I thought. We'd better call the Guinness Book of Records. Yeah, or the RSPCA. Yeah. Anyway, I've got to go. I've got to go and see Mr. Slivovonovich. What, at this time of night? Yeah, Mrs. Farrell rang earlier and said he's not going to put the spa in a new bathroom. Oh, why not? Because he's going to put an ornamental fiberglass fountain in the bedroom. <laughs> Because his brother makes ornamental fiberglass fountains. <laughs> no point in time to stop him. You can always turn him into a water bed. Yeah. Listen, uh, keep me posted if Nudge starts eating again. This could save me some money. Hi, Dad. Yeah, I don't know what's the matter with him. Yeah, see you, kids. Hi, Dad. What's the matter with who? Nudge. I offered to buy him a pizza and he, uh, he said no. I don't understand it. Are you thick or just dense? I wonder, could I have a third option on that? Oh, try, um, callous, unfeeling, insensitive. Here's a dictionary. Pick your own. What have I done? You've hurt his feelings. Oh, how? You asked Tracy to the formal. Well, I didn't know I was supposed to ask him. <laughs> he wanted to ask her. Oh, is that all? Oh, he can have one of the others. This one would suit him. She comes with a pizza. Sex is pig. Who, me? You can't just hang girls around like a packet of chips. Yeah, well, I always have. Oh, besides, Nudge is in love with Tracy. Oh, don't be ridiculous. Nudge doesn't love anything that doesn't have onions and pickles on it. <laughs> you know his motto. What's that? If it can't move, you're allowed to eat it. Simon, he's really broken up over this. Now, why did you have to ask her anyway? It was like Hillary and Everest because she was there. I mean, it's, it's a reflex action with me. I see a girl, I ask her out, she says yes. Well, your reflex action has hurt your best friend. Oh, no big deal. I'll give it back. You can't do that. Nudge has his pride. Where? I don't know, but he must have it somewhere. <laughs> no, it, it'll have to look as if Tracy's changed her mind. And why would she do that? Because I've just been over there telling what a creep you really are. Oh, thanks a lot. No, I haven't really. Look, I just explained things to her and she said she'd go along with it if you would. Well? Oh, come on, Simon. Look, you've got heaps of girls that want to go out with you. True. <laughs> How about it? Look, he is your best friend. Yeah. Well, after all, this way I keep three people happy. Three people? Yeah. Nudge, Tracy, and whoever I finally decide to take to the pool. <laughs> Tracy's on her way. Now, you tell Nudge to come over? Yeah. Hey, here he comes now. Hi, Nudge. How are you feeling? Oh, I feel like putting my head in the oven. It's electric. How about the toaster? <laughs> oh, that's not good. I've got to guess what water's this going to do. That'll help. Shut up, Simon. Yeah, no, in my luck, it'll probably be off peak. And the water will be cold and my face will go a wrinkle like a prune. Oh, look, guys, Tracy's here. No, oh, I'm getting out of here. Sit down. Why, Tracy? What brings you here? I've got something that I have to say to Simon. Me? Yes. I have discovered that you're callous, shallow, insensitive. Have I left anything out? Try sexist pig. Oh, thanks. And a sexist pig. <laughs> Are you trying to say you've come all the way over here to tell me this? And that because of my myriad character flaws, you no longer wish to accompany me to the formal? Uh, yes, yes. 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 Uh, and I would like to accept Nudge's offer to escort me instead. No way. What? <laughs> well, you've insulted my best friend. <laughs> My offer is withdrawn. <laughs> what do I do now? Well, you gave it your best shot. The silly thing is, I really like Nudge. I mean, I'd like to go to the formal with him. Well, do you want to give it one last try? Why not? Nudge, you've withdrawn your offer to take me to the formal. Yes. Well, what about if I offer to take you instead? What, you mean you'll pay for the tickets? Yep, and the course, Nudge. <laughs> How about a pizza? Thank you, sir. <laughs> Well? Well, I don't know. I'll have to think about it. I thought about it, okay. <laughs> oh, Betty, is there any mail for me? Only one for me, Mr. Kelly. Oh, does this mean I don't get a hello, Mr. Kelly from Helga? Oh, 
Oh, I nearly forgot. Hello, Mr. Kelly. <laughs> You're in good spirits today. I am now. I just got an invitation to a wedding. Whose? Harriet Urquhart Jones. Not with Stan? No, with George Miller. <laughs> I should have seen the signs. What signs? Well, at the Bachelor and Spinster's Ball, whilst, while she was playing hard to get with Stan, she was playing even harder to get with George. Oh, what did she say to him? <laughs> Not a word. She ignored him all night. Harriet will make a lovely bride. Why is that? Because she's not marrying Stan. <laughs> well, happiness seems to be in the air, and today I am finally rid of Mr. Slivovonovich. Oh, did Mrs. Farrell fire him? No, she ran off with him. They're going to get married. <laughs> His other brother's a priest. <laughs> hey, Dad, can I borrow your dress studs? Yeah, they're on the dressing table. Oh, and uh, which lucky girl are you taking to the formal tonight? I'm going stag. You're going stag? I don't believe it. Yeah, it seems someone's been telling all the girls I know that I'm callous, shallow, insensitive and a sexist pig. Tracy said that? Tracy didn't say it. Nudge said it. <laughs> Who's Tracy?